guys, and welcome to today's webinar from Royal Cyber. My name is uh, Amar Nadim, and I am a Senior Business Development Executive at Royal Cyber. Today we're going to talk about uh, the best performance tune-up challenges and what are their best practices. Uh, usually we have uh, one speaker per webinar, but for today we have three uh, brilliant speakers. Uh, Mr. Own, uh, who has worked with Royal Cyber, and he is the Principal Solution Architect. Then we have Mr. Sarvan, and he is the Senior Technical Lead. And last but not the least, Mr. Arif Hussain, who is a Senior WebSphere Administrator. So without any further ado, let me hand it over to Mr. Own, who will be conducting the webinar. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, the, in this webinar, we will guide you through the art of uh, performance tuning and what you need to learn to be able to master this art and handle performance issues efficiently. We will focus more on how to prepare to deal with performance tuning and discuss on best practices by following the three pillars required for performance tuning. Uh, the first pillar, defining the process, is the most important task. Uh, this process includes an elements like uh, uh, maintaining a proper performance load test environment, which is a replica of production, defining a proper process for reporting of per performance issues, which includes uh, complete uh, issue description, all necessary steps to replicate the issue, uh, issue evidence such as log extracts, uh, screenshots, recording, and so on. And then uh, uh, validating the performance issues uh, so we can uh, avoid all falsely reported issues. And then uh, defining acceptable uh, target performance goal uh, at component or page level, and also have a dedicated performance tuning team to analyze and fix performance tuning issues. Now we'll go to the second pillar. The second pillar is uh, to have required tools in place to capture the performance issues. Uh, as part of the Proactive measures, we recommend to set up open source tools such as Nagios, Greylog, and SolarMeter. Also, uh, perform end user response time monitoring using tools like monitors and alert site. And it is very critical to perform DB monitoring to get detailed health check reports also obtain periodic reports from these tools to ensure that they are working and helpful at the same time. Other diagnostics, uh, diagnostic tools such as AppDynamics, Dynatrace, and Neuralic are extremely useful for detail level monitoring and identifying which component, code, or SQL query is taking most of the execution time. In this webinar, we, are not, we will not go into details about diagnostic tools, but uh, diagnostic tools uh, license, uh, licenses are a bit expensive. So if you don't have diagnostic tools set up in production, it is recommended to install these in QA environment to check the compatibility requirements and secure the essential licenses in order to quickly enable the diagnostic to monitoring in production when required. We will go over some of the proactive monitors, monitoring tools now. So monitors provides uh, how monitor works. It's a SaaS based tool. Uh, it, it provides end user monitoring using HTTP pings from different locations globally. So based on your user uh, user location, you can be, uh, 
set up uh, HTTP pings and it will give you uh, alerts as soon as your site uh, goes down uh, and your uh, and allows uh, also allows recorded web transactions to be run at a certain frequency alerts support team for any outage or response time delay has a very user friendly dashboard to quickly see historical data graphs on when the outage occurred so there is chart here which basically gives us a idea of uh, if it is uh, web transactions which failed or the http ping and it easily gives you also gives you an idea of the duration when the uh, so it, the site was down for 20 minutes and uh, gives you a time range so this is when the site went down recovered and uh, the duration and it from which location it went down the second tool uh, we recommend is the NetJuice tool NetJuice uh, provides server and network uh, device monitoring. It alerts you when a particular server that's being monitored goes wrong and will alert again when the service comes back to normal required state. NetJuice uh, main uh, use is it provides n number of functionality using different software plugins. For instance, it provides plugins uh, for WebSphere, which is uh, databases, MQ, web servers, and different uh, OS server monitoring. Uh, it requires a uh, Nagios uh, Linux server, and uh, and then the agents are installed on the target servers. Agents agent basically uh, collects all the matrices. And at a fixed frequency, sends those matrix data to the server. And then this NetJuice server has a user friendly UI to monitor all those alerts. And then you can create rules and set up alerts as required. These are some of the recommended uh, uh, metrics uh, which we have uh, configured for all of our uh, previous clients. And uh, there are thousands of plugins available for your required target system needs. For instance, we have uh, set up a VPN connectivity uh, set check. Uh, there was a script uh, we had to set up, and that was also monitored uh, using NetJuice. The other tool we are going to go over is very interesting. Uh, it uh, helps, uh, it's called Greylock. It's an open source log management tool. It provides a user friendly website for easy access of logs from thousands of servers. Uh, like you can have clusters of app servers, web servers, solar, or databases. It basically aggregates log servers from all those servers and gives you a easy user friendly uh, interface to view all those logs uh, it saves a lot of time for developers to so they don't have to log into the system and then it provides uh, super fast query results of logs data using elastic search uh, can and it can store historical log data for the past one year with millions of log entries receives log entries in real time, allows logs to be trailed from any stream. It integrates, it can be, uh, the data from gray log can be integrated to uh, other NMS tools like uh, Kibana, PageDuty, Datadoc uh, for custom dashboards and alert notifications. This, now we will see some of the uh, the screenshots to uh, so this is the the user interface it here we are showing uh, the log data from different servers is collected as streams uh, here it shows the log records received in each stream 
uh, uh, the search feature is very powerful and fast. You can uh, search keyword or trail log data from a, a particular stream, like uh, like you note one of like if you want to search a keyword only for from node one to ten in a QA environment, or if you want to just uh, search from node one or all of the streams. I mean, you have the flexibility to search uh, any from any system. And this basically gives you an idea of if you want to see how many times we have received this error. So you can find out the out the count of how many uh, times the keyword was found in the last minute or hours, day or week or month's range. Here it basically it shows the actual log entries. And on the right side, it shows the details, detail of the log. And now I will uh, transfer. So this basically brings, uh, these are all the monitoring tools. And uh, now we'll go over the DB-related uh, monitoring. Uh, and uh, for that, is I will uh, pass it on to Saran. Uh, yeah, thank you, Wolf. Hi, all. I'm starting up with uh, the DB monitoring tool, how it works and you know what are the major uh, area which covers. So basically the DB monitoring tool which is required to you know uh, identify and do a uh, troubleshoot quickly and do a proactive uh, monitoring areas which is the major area which we need to cover in the uh, monitoring uh, uh, tool. So the here we have uh, the, the tool can be, you know, which is customized content can be updated as per the customer needs based on the, uh, we, we can modify the uh, uh, parameters, whatever is required and as well as we can add the email IDs and, you know, we will be getting the uh, reports according to our uh, convenient timings. Here we have, a, we, you know, the major uh, DB parameters manually every time, you know, we have to uh, monitor, uh, log into the DB and do all health check and all the stuff. But here, the, the tool will take it automatically, you know, the, all the parameters which needs to be checked and it will do a, a, all default uh, uh, data collection as well. And it will do all the uh, uh, collection and it will give the report as well. So here, the reducing the manual, uh, you know, work, here it has to be get removed from here. So the, all the things will automatically get practically monitored and uh, it will be taken to the necessary uh, we can take a proactive uh, action where we can save our time as well as the quick resolution, the performance it can be, you know. We can take it too quickly to the further resolution area. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah, here uh, the DB monitoring tool, here we have into, there are performance uh, uh, which area like uh, the, there are certain queries it may take long time and there are, there are the connection count which may go, go high. So we have to, uh, this report which help most of the time into the peak season. Uh, like for example, we have to you know monitor the DB for uh, very, very closely for a certain type of uh, time of uh, days or weeks or hours. So it's all uh, you know, required uh, uh, according to our uh, plan, we can uh, increase the, uh, uh, we can enable the, the job and where it can be able to. Uh, scheduled and it can be, uh, we'll be getting the report as well. So here there are the certain parameters which we have worked with our customers and we identified and we have the sample report and uh, where I have, I know, the snapshot of how it looks and uh, if there is an issue in a particular scenario. So how the report, it looks, both both the things I have here. So I'll show you how it works in, in the next slides. Uh, next slide, Paul. Yeah, this is the sample report where you know you, where you can see that what are the parameters which is monitored here and as well as the status, how, what is the status about. So each states you have uh, uh, what, what exactly the currently uh, it, in, the, in the database, how it runs. If there is an issue here, we'll be seeing you know abnormalities or uh, if there is any query runs, the, the queries are running here and the kind of connection count, how much you know, the, all the stuffs we'll be getting in the proper, uh, so this will be like a high level report. But at the same time, when we need uh, you know, more data, we don't have to do login to uh, the database. We can in, we, we be able to see the if there is any abnormalities that the, the required uh, the data uh, will be collected and it will be triggered to our email. 
where we can see our uh, the diagnostic or you know doing a quick uh, performance uh, issues which is anything is occurred from the DB perspective so we'll be able to troubleshoot quickly you know without a delay where we can get to know, we can get into the uh, solution or uh, conclusion point I have a uh, one of certain issue where we have in one particular time and we got into we identified what is the issue and how it works uh, we got, I have it in the other slide also in the uh, next slide Yeah, this is the sample report where you can see, like uh, the report will send it via email and no manual intervention is required here. You can see here that the diaglock it shows like abnormal. So when there is an abnormal in the diaglock, we will be doing the attachment as well in the email. So where you have the attachment, it has a detailed uh, uh, the what kind of the error it is and why the, the yeah, abnormality is available. So it will be, uh, you don't have to log into the database where you can see it here and you can understand why that issue. Is it a major one or you know, or uh, uh, see you can see here this, uh, the, the, the backup is not available. I mean, the backup, only online backup is not allowed because of the database is not recoverable or backup pending condition is in effect. So it means here the DB has to be in you know, uh, recovery mode. So then only we can be able to take an online backup. So that is where uh, the overall uh, picture where we can take a decision. It is a, a known error and which can be you know uh, ignored. So those kind of things which can be able to understand, uh, we can take a proactive action immediately uh, with by doing the DB health check monitoring uh, tool uh, uh, script. So this we can schedule it in our uh, CRAN where we can uh, schedule according to, as I said, uh, the time weekly or uh, uh, daily or per hour or per, per every five minutes we can schedule and we'll be getting the report according to the, the customized uh, manner way. So overall the DB health check is uh, reducing the manual work into automated system and doing the manual intervention it is totally reducing and uh, it will be like a, a proactive uh, best uh, manner of uh, uh, getting the uh, reports via email as well as uh, monitoring with the proper record where we can futurely where we can analyze in the uh, best practice manner. So overall, uh, if there is any questions, I'll let you know in the end of the session. By the time I'm handing over to Mr. Uh, uh, Arif, uh, he will take you to further the slides. Thank you, Saravan. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, now I will go over the third pillar, which is to be ready to deal with performance issues. What meant here is to have detailed strategies and automation tasks in place so we can quickly identify root cause without missing SLAs. For performance issues, it's very important to focus on the root cause identification rather than aimlessly applying various fixes to the issues. In order to quickly identify the root cause, we should have a strategies or investigation plan. A strategy will have errors and possible solutions. New error scenario can be added to make it useful for, 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 for performance tuning. We will go over some sample strategy document in next slides. Other most recommended task is to automate all server changes using Chef, Jenkins, and WCVD. We will provide detailed overview of Chef in later slides. From the proactive monitor tool, when we receive high CPU alert, performance tuning team can use existing investigation plan and follow steps, which are discussed and thoroughly reviewed by team during load testing phases. This is a simple strategy plan for all CPU related issues, which guide team to easily identify root cause faster. Here is sample investigation plan for thread issues. It is recommended that you update these plan on weekly basis for all new error received. You can start creating strategies for categories of error you received in logs, such as data load, WCBD, stage probe, etc. So now I will provide an overview of Chef Automation tool. Chef is uh, actually a platform for automation. It automates the operations. Uh, all the operations that we, that we perform to build and run an environment. For example, 
to build a web sphere application server environment we do installation configuration deployment and all other administration tasks it actually transforms complex infrastructure into code it uses a ruby language for scripting a chef is independent of any product and architecture whether we are operating uh, in the cloud uh, on on premises uh, or a hybrid chef actually automates how applications are configured deployed and managed across your network no matter its size chef is built around a simple concept achieving desired state centralized modeling of IT infrastructure in a chef based infrastructure all the operations are automated so less time required for all admin tasks especially uh, for a production environment chef decreases the downtime and production release are more error free for any one node in production environment if any one node in production environment fails or behave uh, unexpected uh, we can build the new nodes very quickly during tuning phase updating configuration parameter is very quick we need to update the parameter file only and in term of chef that parameter file is called uh, data bag So uh, here are a few uh, chef components. Uh, each organization is uh, comprised of one or more workstation, a single server, and every node that will be configured and maintained by the chef client. And the third component is uh, chef client. The four main chef components includes workstation, nodes, chef server, chef client. So now we will go over these components in detail uh, in the next slides. So the uh, workstation. A, a workstation is a computer that is configured to run various chef command line tools. The main usage of uh, workstation includes uh, like a development cookbook and recipes and authoring them using uh, Ruby syntax and patterns and uh, keeping the chef repo synchronized with a version source control uh, like Bitbucket uh, using different command line tools like Knife defining roles and environments and ensuring that critical data is stored in data bags. Uh, workstation is also used for interacting with nodes uh, as per requirement such as uh, performing a bootstrap operation. A node is uh, any machine, uh, any physical uh, machine, any virtual cloud or any network device. Uh, that is under management by chef. Uh, type of nodes uh, can, that can be managed by chef include the followings uh, like uh, server, cloud, virtual machine, network device, or any container. So the chef server uh, acts uh, as a hub of configuration data. The chef server stores a cookbook the policies that are applied to nodes, the metadata that describes each registered node that is being managed by chef. Nodes use the chef client to ask the chef server for configuration details such as recipes, templates, and file distributions. The chef client then does as much of the configuration work as possible on the nodes themselves, not on the chef server. This scalable approach distributes the configuration efforts throughout the organization. A chef client is an agent that runs locally on every node that is under management by chef. When a chef client is run, it will perform all of the steps that are required to bring the node into the expected state including uh, registering and authentication, authenticating the node with the chef server, building the node object, synchronizing the cookbooks, compiling the resource collection by loading each of the required cookbook 
including recipes, attributes, and all other dependencies. And taking the appropriate and required action to configure the node. And looking for exceptions and notification, handling each as required. So this is an overview of performance tuning phases. Our team followed for various clients and uh, we have excellent expertise to meet any of uh, your performance tuning goals. For detail on our performance optimization program, you can visit the website. So now I will hand it back to Amar. All right, guys, uh, I hope that was uh, good information for you guys. I just want to thank Mr. Owen and uh, Mr. Sarnov and Mr. Arif uh, for the beautiful presentation. Uh, basically, these are some of our prestigious clients. Uh, we have worked with a plethora of uh, big names in the industry uh, when it comes to e-commerce or any other solution, uh, Walgreens and Ford and as such. And if you guys have any questions uh, regarding the topic of the webinar, you can uh, give us an email at info at royalcyber.com. Once again, it's uh, info at royalcyber.com. And uh, we will be getting back to you. And uh, thank you for joining and have a great day. Bye-bye.